The International Geophysical Year IGY, French, Géophysique Internationale was an international scientific project that lasted from July 1, 1957, to December 31, 1958. It marked the end of a long period during the Cold War when scientific interchange between East and West had been seriously interrupted. 67 countries participated in IGY projects, although one notable exception was the mainland People's Republic of China, which was protesting against the participation of the Republic of China Taiwan. East and West agreed to nominate the Belgian Marcel Nicolet as Secretary General of the Associated International Organization. The IGY encompassed eleven Earth sciences aurora and airglow, cosmic rays, geomagnetism, gravity, ionospheric physics, longitude and latitude determinations, precision mapping, meteorology, oceanography, seismology, and solar activity. The timing of the IGY was particularly suited for studying some of these phenomena, since it covered the peak of solar cycle 19. Both the Soviet Union and the U.S. launched artificial satellites for this event. The Soviet Union's Sputnik 1, launched on October 4, 1957, was the first successful artificial satellite. Other significant achievements of the IGY included the discovery of the Van Allen radiation belts by Explorer 1 and the defining of mid-ocean submarine ridges, an important confirmation of plate tectonic theory. Also detected was the rare occurrence of hard solar corpuscular radiation that could be highly dangerous for manned spaceflight. Events <laughs> 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 The origin of the International Geophysical Year can be traced to the International Polar Years held in 1882–1883 and 1932–1933 and which would be held again in 2007–2009. On 5 April 1950, several top scientists including Lloyd Berkner, Sidney Chapman, S. Fred Singer, and Harry Vestine, met in James Van Allen's living room and suggested that the time was ripe to have a worldwide geophysical year instead of a polar year, especially considering recent advances in rocketry, radar, and computing. Berkner and Chapman proposed to the International Council of Scientific Unions that an International Geophysical Year IGY be planned for 1957-58, coinciding with an approaching period of maximum solar activity. In 1952, the IGY was announced. Joseph Stalin's death in 1953 opened the way for international collaboration with the Soviet Union. On 29 July 1955, James C. Hagerty, President Dwight D. Eisenhower's press secretary, announced that the United States intended to launch small Earth-circling satellites between 1 July 1957 and 31 December 1958 as part of the United States' contribution to the International Geophysical Year IGY. Project Vanguard would be managed by the Naval Research Laboratory and to be based on developing sounding rockets, which had the advantage that they were primarily used for non military scientific experiments. Four days later, at the 6th Congress of International Astronautical Federation in Copenhagen, scientist Leonid I. Sadov spoke to international reporters at the Soviet Embassy and announced his country's intention to launch a satellite as well, in the near future. To the surprise of many, the USSR launched Sputnik 1 as the first artificial Earth satellite on October 4, 1957. After several failed Vanguard launches, Werner von Braun and his team convinced President Dwight D. Eisenhower to use one of their U.S. Army missiles for the Explorer program there then being no inhibition about using military rockets to get into space. On November 8, 1957, the U.S. Secretary of Defense instructed the U.S. Army to use a modified Jupiter C rocket to launch a satellite. The U.S. achieved this goal only four months later with Explorer 1, on February 1, 1958, but after Sputnik 2 in November 3, 1957, making Explorer 1 the third artificial Earth satellite. Vanguard 1 became the fourth, launched on March 17, 1958. The Soviet victory in the space race would be followed by considerable political consequences, one of which was the creation of the U.S. Space Agency NASA on July 29, 1958. The British-American Survey of the Atlantic, carried out between September 1954 and July 1959, that discovered full length of the mid-Atlantic ridges plate tectonics, was a major discovery during the IGY. World Data Centers 
Although the 1932 polar year accomplished many of its goals, it fell short on others because of the advance of World War II. In fact, because of the war, much of the data collected and scientific analyses completed during the 1932 polar year were lost forever, something that was particularly troubling to the IGY organizing committee. The committee resolved that, "...all observational data shall be available to scientists and scientific institutions in all countries." They felt that without the free exchange of data across international borders, there would be no point in having an IGY. In April 1957, just three months before the IGY began, scientists representing the various disciplines of the IGY established the World Data Center system. The United States hosted World Data Center A, and the Soviet Union hosted World Data Center B. World Data Center C was subdivided among countries in Western Europe, Australia, and Japan. Today, NOAA hosts seven of the 15 World Data Centers in the United States. Each World Data Center would eventually archive a complete set of IGY data to deter losses prevalent during the International Polar Year of 1932. Each World Data Center was equipped to handle many different data formats, including computer punch cards and tape—the original computer media. In addition, each host country agreed to abide by the organizing committee's resolution that there should be a free and open exchange of data among nations. ICSUWDS goals are to preserve quality assured scientific data and information, to facilitate open access, and promote the adoption of standards. ICSU World Data System created in 2008 superseded the World Data Centeras WDCs and Federation of Astronomical and Geophysical Data Analysis Services FAGs created by ICSU to manage data generated by the International Geophysical Year. <laughs> Antarctica The IGY triggered an 18-month year of Antarctic science. The International Council of Scientific Unions, a parent body, broadened the proposals from polar studies to geophysical research. More than 70 existing national scientific organizations then formed IGY committees, and participated in the cooperative effort. Haley Research Station was founded in 1956, for the IGY, by an expedition from the Royal Society. The bay where the expedition set up their base was named Haley Bay, after the astronomer Edmund Haley. In Japan, the Antarctic exploration was planned in 1955 by Monbisho and Science and Technology Agency. Japan Maritime Safety Agency offered icebreaker Soya as the South Pole observation ship. The first Antarctic Observation Corps commanded by Takeshi Nagata left Japan in 1956, arriving at Antarctica on January 29, 1957. Showa Station was the first Japanese observation base on Antarctica and was set up on same day. France contributed with Dumont d'Urville Station and Chacot Station in Adélie Land. As a forerunner expedition, the ship Commandant Chacot of the French Navy spent nine months of 1949 50 at the coast of Adélie Land. Ionospheric soundings were performed aboard this ship. The first French station, Port Martin, was completed April 9, 1950, but destroyed by fire the night of January 22 to 23, 1952. Belgium established the King Baudouin base in 1958. The expedition was led by Gaston de Gerlache, son of Adrien de Gerlache, who had led the 1897 to 1899 Belgian Antarctic expedition. The Amundsen Scott South Pole station was erected as the first permanent structure at the South Pole in January 1957. It survived intact for 53 years, but was slowly buried in the ice as all structures there eventually sink into the icy crust, until it was demolished in December 2010 for safety reasons. <laughs> Arctic Ice Skate 2 was a floating research station constructed and manned by U.S. scientists. It mapped the bottom of the Arctic Ocean. Zeke Langdon was a meteorologist on the project. Ice Skate 2 was planned to be manned in six-month shifts. But due to soft ice surfaces for landing some crew members were stationed for much longer. At one point they lost all communications with anyone over their radios for one month except the expedition on the South Pole. At one point the ice sheet broke up and their fuel tanks started floating away from the base. 
They had to put pans under the plane engines as soon as they landed as any oil spots would go straight through the ice in the intense sunshine. Their only casualty was a man who got too close to the propeller with the oil pan. Norbert Untersteiner was the project leader for drifting station Alpha and in 2008 produced and narrated a documentary about the project for the National Snow and Ice Data Center. Topic: <laughs> Participating countries. The participating countries for the IGY included the following: Legacy In the end, the IGY was a resounding success, and it led to advancements that live on today. For example, the work of the IGY led directly to the Antarctic Treaty, which called for the use of Antarctica for peaceful purposes and cooperative scientific research. Since then, international cooperation has led to protecting the Antarctic environment, preserving historic sites, and conserving the animals and plants. Today, 41 nations have signed the treaty and international collaborative research continues. The ICSU World Data System WDS was created by the 29th General Assembly of the International Council for Science ICSU and builds on the 50-year legacy of the former ICSU World Data Centers WDCs and former Federation of Astronomical and Geophysical Data Analysis Services FAGS. This World Data System, hosts the repositories for data collected during the IGY. Seven of the 15 world data centers in the United States are co-located at NOAA National Data Centers or at NOAA Affiliates. These ICSU data centers not only preserve historical data, but also promote research and ongoing data collection. The fourth International Polar Year on 2007-2008 focused on climate change and its effects on the polar environment. Sixty countries participated in this effort and it will include studies in the Arctic and Antarctic. Topic IGY representations in popular culture IGY What a Beautiful World is a track on Donald Fagan's 1982 album, The Nightfly. The song is sung from an optimistic viewpoint during the IGY, and features references to then-futuristic concepts, such as solar power first used in 1958, spandex invented in 1959, space travel for entertainment, and undersea international high-speed rail. The song peaked at number 26 on the Billboard Hot 100 on the 27th of November to the 11th of December 1982 and was nominated for a Grammy Award for Song of the Year. The IGY is featured prominently during 1957-1958 run of Pogo comic strips by Walt Kelly. The characters in the strip refer to the scientific initiative as the GO Physical year, during this run, the characters try to make their own contributions to scientific endeavors, such as putting a flea on the moon. A subsequent compilation of the strips was published by Simon & Schuster SC in 1958 as G.O. Physical Pogo and later Pogos will be that was in 1979. The IGY was featured in a cartoon by Russell Brockbank in Punch magazine in November 1956. It shows the three main superpowers UK, USA and USSR at the South Pole, each with a gathering of penguins which they are trying to educate with culture. The penguins in the British camp are being bored with Francis Bacon, in the American camp they are happily playing baseball, while the Russian camp resembles a gulag, with barbed wire fences and the penguins are made to march and perform military maneuvers. The Alistair MacLean novel Night Without End takes place in and around an IGY research station in Greenland. The IGY features in two episodes of the 1960-61 season of the documentary television series Expedition, The Frozen Continent and Man's First Winter at the South Pole. See also International Biological Program International Year of Planet Earth List of Antarctic Expeditions Sulphur Mountain Cosmic Ray Station References and sources References Sources University of Saskatchewan Archives History of Ionosons, at the UK's Rutherford Appleton Laboratory History of Arctic Exploration 
James Van Allen, From High School to the Beginning of the Space Era, a biographical sketch by George Ludwig Fraser, Ronald, 1957. Once Round the Sun, The Story of the International Geophysical Year, 1957-58. London, England, Hodder and Stratton Ltd. Schefter, James The Race, The Uncensored Story of How America Beat Russia to the Moon. New York, Doubleday. ISBN 0-385-49253-7. Sullivan, Walter. 1961. Assault on the Unknown, The International Geophysical Year. New York, New York, McGraw-Hill Book Company. Wilson, J. Tuzo. 1961. IGY, The Year of the New Moons. New York, New York, Alfred A. Knopf, Inc. External links Documents regarding the International Geophysical Year, Dwight D. Eisenhower Presidential Library. IGY on the Ice. Produced by Barbara Bogave, Soundprint. 2011 radio documentary with John C. Barrent, Tony Gowan, Phil Smith, and Charlie Bentley.